Senator Reid. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Levitin, uh, as I understand it, and you could elucidate for me, uh, the agency becomes effective uh, in a few days. It has the authority to promulgate regulations. Those regulations will be enforced by the existing regulatory entities. Um, is that accurate? No, uh, on, no it, not quite. On July 21st, the CFPB uh, becomes a, stands up. It's, it becomes effective. At that point, unless there is a director uh, that has been appointed by the president and that and who has either been a recess appointment or, nom or uh, confirmed by the Senate, the Treasury Secretary becomes the acting director. At that, uh, the Treasury Secretary, however, will have limited powers uh, as acting director. The Treasury Secretary will only be able to exercise the powers uh, given the Bureau by sub, uh, what is it, subtitle F of uh, Title 10. Those powers include enforcing existing federal consumer protection laws but they do not include the power to, uh, to create, do new rulemakings other than under those laws, and they do, it does not include the ability to examine non-banks. Thank you very much, because I think that's an important clarification of what happens uh, effectively uh, on the day that the agency stands up. Uh, one of the uh, consistent themes here is that we should be applying these uh, standard provisions uh, to all financial agencies. So, Mr. Pincus, would you and the Chamber uh, support uh, subjecting the Federal Reserve's budget to the Congressional Appropriations process? I, I think the Chamber's position, Senator, is that uh, at least one of these checks so what check, would, what check would you Well, the Federal Reserve has one check already, which is that it is a multi-member commission. It is not a single person who ha exercises the power. And that, of course, Congress did that because the right. power that the Fed has is vast. And it didn't want to put that into the hands of one person. So the, multi, so the, the Fed is a multi-member commission. Uh, but uh, what is your position with respect to the budget as well as the FDIC budget? Should it be subject to Congress? No. No. no, we think we think we think with that that history has shown that that check has proved right. effective with respect to the Federal Reserve. But of course, it's not a check that's present with respect to the bureau. Well, how effective has it been since I believe Congress in the '90s, '93, '94 passed HOPA, which was designed to address the issue of predatory lending. Federal Reserve refused to enforce the regulation, despite the their commission status. In fact, it wasn't until, as I believe, March of 2009 that they did enforce some regulations with respect to predatory lending, but not under HOPA, under the Truth in Lending Act, which they have authority, to, which they had authority for a long time before HOPA. So, as far as consumers are concerned, do you feel that commission structure was effective? I, I think there, there certainly, and the chamber said this during the Dodd Frank debate that there were failures uh, with respect to the entities that exited, that had consumer protection authority, and the chamber supported congressional action to remedy those failures. So the chamber certainly took the recognized that during the run up to the financial crisis, there were failures by, by in enforcement, there were failures of regulators to exercise their existing regulatory authority. One question was, what was the best way to remedy that? Congress decided the best way to, to do that was to consolidate that authority in a new regulator. Uh, but the problem is uh, that it's a new regulator that, that is not really has none of the uh, uh, checks and balances designed to uh, ensure accountability, first of all, that the president proposed when he first proposed the agency, uh, but that are the features generally of our, of our government structure. How about the commission structure of the SEC with respect to, with respect to the regulation of Lehman Brothers, uh, Bear Stearns, and others? Was that, was that an effect? And by the way, their budget is subject to congressional authorization also. Do you think they were effective regulators with that structure in place, two of the elements? Uh, I, I think the SEC has, has had some regulatory failures, and in fact, the chamber issued a report before the financial crisis saying that, that, it, uh, that, that changes were needed. On the other hand, I think if you look at the Federal Trade Commission, many people would say that the Federal Trade Commission has, A, been an extremely ex uh, successful and effective consumer regulator, and also if you compare the Federal Trade Commission to the antitrust division, I think a lot of people would say that it's been a more effective antitrust regulator than the antitrust division has been. Senator, may I add a 
comment? Uh, I'd like to go to Mr. Levitin and then, and if I may, Mr. Thank you. get a comment. Mr. Levitin, you've heard this dialogue. What's your impression? Um, I, I think that Mr. Pincus is being rather kind in his characterization of the FTC as a consumer protection uh, agency. The FTC has tried at times, but it has been held on a very tight leash by Congress, uh, not least through the appropriations process. And when the F, uh, if you if you think back a ways to 1980, uh, the FTC uh, tried to uh, ban adver some uh, certain advertising targeting children as unfair. And what happened? Congress stepped in and uh, choked off the FTC's budget. Uh, then we see a few years later, we see Congress itself acting on cigarette advertising targeting children. I don't know that that's the way we really want to ha ha do our re do our regulation, having having a whipsaw effect. Um, I think uh, you know, maybe the most instructive comparison is with the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. Mm -hmm. No commission structure, right. single comptroller. The, com the, the U.S. Code uh, expressly prohibits the Treasury Secretary from uh, delaying or preventing the comptroller from undertaking rulemakings. So, you know, basically, really a very independent regulator with an independent budget. And, with, uh, and that, that is really the analog for the CFPB. The comptroller has been an incredibly effective advocate on behalf of banks. And that part of the creating the CFPB is to create a counterweight to that, recognizing that consumer protection and safety and soundness need to be balanced, that it cannot simply be one subordinated to the other, but that they need to be balanced with, with parallel agencies. Quick comment, Ms. Calhoun. Yes, I, I think in this discussion, following up on Professor Levitin's comments, in this discussion we have overlooked the most fundamental checks and balances there, and that's the constitutional authority of the Congress through the normal legislative process. There have been repeated instances where agencies have taken actions that the Congress thought were inappropriate, and Congress has then, through the normal legislative process, revised the structure or rules and authority of that agency. It's what concerns us so much about doing this in advance by changing the structure of the agency is the history that we've had and one of the most recent ones, when the Federal Reserve proposed modest credit card reforms, far less comprehensive than what the Senate and the Congress enacted, the OCC declared those mild reforms as a threat to the safety and soundness of the banking system. And it's that viewpoint that it affected short-term profits, we're going to oppose it, that makes us concerned about putting it in a place where it can veto readily the actions of the Consumer Bureau. Thank Senator, you, Mr. Chairman. Senator.